What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp quick tip video for you. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about a few different places to find some materials and textures to use in your model. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so as many of you probably know, SketchUp comes in with a bunch of built-in textures that you can apply to your models. Um, so it's got a pretty decent library and a lot of the time you can find what you're looking for in there. So it's got bricks and stones and a lot of different things that you can come in here and you can apply to your model really easily easily. So a lot of the time this stuff will work fine. Um, and these are all pretty good textures. And as you can see, like if you're just looking for like a general brick or something like that, they usually work pretty good. But a lot of the time what you run into is you don't necessarily always want your SketchUp model to look like the, all the other SketchUp models and everyone else is using these textures too. So what you want to do is you want to download some textures to put into your model. So I'm going to talk about a few different places to get those. So the first thing I'm going to talk about isn't even necessarily downloading a texture as much as using textures from your pictures. So sometimes, depending on what you're trying to do, you can use photos um, that you actually have and apply them to a model. So in this case, this is a this is a model that I built for my match photo tutorial. And as you can see, what it was is I have an image that I used to build this uh, to build this off of. And then what I was able to do is I was able to apply the texture or apply the picture to my model as a texture. So that being said, this is probably not the best way to do this for a bunch of different reasons. One of which is if you get into things repeating and stuff like that, it won't look very good. And then also you're very limited because if you see like up on the roof, this didn't necessarily apply the way that it needed to. So really this model at the moment only works from this kind of angle. So that being said, you can take your images and apply them. And you don't even need to do this with the match photo tool. You could also just come in here take an image that you have and just import it as a texture. So you'd go to import, you would go to texture, and then you would just select whatever your image is and you can apply it to a face just like this. So you can use photos to do this, but if you're using a picture of something, it probably won't repeat right. Um, so it's really probably best for just creating quick models like this, like if you're building these in the background and then uh, moving on to something else. So um, before I move on to the next parts of this video, I want to make sure you guys understand the difference between a seamless and a non-seamless texture. So what I have in here is I have a couple different faces that I came in here and applied a couple different um, textures to. So the way SketchUp works is it takes an image and it tiles it on your face so it repeats it over and over and over again. And we can take a look at this red brick texture and kind of see what I'm talking about. So it's very obvious um, on this face because this is just a white face. If I was to reverse it, you can see it's just an individual face. And it's very obvious that SketchUp's coming in here and it's trying to repeat an image over and over again. And what you can see is as it tiles this, the edges don't line up. And so when the edges don't line up, you create this kind of ugly, distorted, texture looking face. So what you need to do is you need to look for textures that are called seamless. So if you look at this wall, for example, this is another texture that I downloaded and you can see that as these tile, you can still see the repetition when you kind of zoom out, but when you zoom in, you can see that there's no real ugly edges in here where these come together. So you always want to look for seamless textures when you're looking for textures um, to download. So, and I'll also link to a couple of the tutorials I've done about importing and resizing materials and that sort of thing. But uh, I wanna go ahead and uh, just talk about a couple locations where you can get textures. So the first place you can look is texture websites. So there's a few different texture websites that I use. Um, there's a bunch of different websites dedicated to textures, but some of them, some of them kind of have more seamless textures and good images. Some of them just have images they kind of slapped on there and they don't really work very well. So a lot of it is uh, not necessarily trial and error, but you kind of got to find some places that you trust. So a couple places that I use are SketchUp Texture Club and also textures.com. And I like what textures.com have has in that it has a filter where I can show all textures. So if I click on show all, it'll give me a whole bunch of these, but if I'm only looking for seamless textures, I can click this option for show seamless textures. 
and you can see how this uh, this filters this so only the seamless textures are uh, shown. And uh, you, I believe on textures.com you may have to create an account and a lot of their lower resolution textures are free and I think you're limited in the amount you can download every day where if you look down here their larger images are premium and so you have to pay for access to them so if you're looking for free textures and that kind of thing you also have to be a little bit choosy but again I think um, I think most of the stuff on SketchUp Texture Club is free as well so and again same kind of thing you can download a lower resolution seamless image but the high resolution stuff you need to uh, you need to actually pay to access. So that's one thing about um, doing this through websites is sometimes there are limitations, but you can get some really good stuff. So the, that's the first way is to look up, or the second way to get textures is to look up texture websites. Um, the third thing you can do is actually a Google image search. So like for example, you can come in here and you can do an image search for a seamless brick texture. And this is where I found this kind of white brick. Um, so usually these will get labeled as seamless and most of the time if they're labeled seamless they actually are occasionally you'll get something and it just isn't and you can tell that it's just kind of false advertising but most of the time it's okay but the one thing you want to do because um, all I did is I clicked on this and it just popped up this image and I could save it but really what you need to do is you need to go to the website where that image is hosted and you need to go down and just read their terms of use down at the bottom so, you know, in this case, it says everything's considered royalty free, which means you can go in here and you can use those. Um, it says that they appreciate, they appreciate, so the TextureMate website appreciates it if you give them credit, but it's not required. So you can come in here and you can use the stuff on this website. So then you can download that and put it into your model. Um, what, what you need to be careful of is just that it's something that's actually legally acceptable for you to use. Um, just so you kind of stay out of trouble um, on that end. So, and then the last way that I'm going to talk about to get textures into your model is actually downloading them from the 3D warehouse. So, um, one of the cool features that SketchUp added in the 2017 version is the ability to download materials out of different models. So, like for example, um, I just looked up a red brick house, um, and this came up, it's by Ginny, so to give her credit. But if you go in here, you can look and see that now when you put your mouse over the materials piece in the 3D warehouse, you can actually click on it and you can download any of these materials into your model. So like for example, if you liked her old brick texture, what you could do is you could click on this and you could download it. And then uh, once you download it, you can apply it to a face in your model. So you can see how easily I was able to pull that new brick texture out and apply that. And uh, it's always good to have a little bit of knowledge of how to resize these so you can come into the materials edit toolbar and adjust these different sizes. So let's say that I wanted this to be a little smaller. I'd change this to tiling every foot instead of every two feet. So you may have to do some resizing and that kind of thing, but it's real easy to bring things into your model from the 3D warehouse. So, you know, if I, Let's say, for example, that I wanted to bring in like a wood or something like that. All of those textures can be found in here, and now they're really easy to bring in. So, and you can see how I can resize that and make it kind of look the way that I want it to look. So, that's probably the easiest way anymore to get things into your model. So, I'd recommend starting there. I think a lot of like brick and retaining wall suppliers have their brick actually in the 3D warehouse as a material so you can download it and put it into a model. Um, that's partially because they want you to design using their products, but it's also just a really helpful thing that they do to make it easy for you to get new textures for your model. So, that's where I'm going to wrap up today's show. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Uh, did you find this helpful? Um, do you have other great resources for finding textures for your models? I just love to have that conversation with you guys. Uh, if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider visiting my support me page on my website. That's the sketchupessentials.com slash support. That's got everything from links to my Patreon page. Um, to links to some extensions you can purchase that'll help support the show. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.